Ed Liu, a co-founder with Leo Labs. Thank you very much for joining us for Australia in Space TV here in Singapore at GSTCE. It's great to be here in Singapore. Uh, Ed, uh, wonderful to have another astronaut on Australia in Space. We were just talking about Pam Melroy and Koichi Wakata, mm -hmm. so uh, you know them very well. Old both friends. Good, good friends. Um, maybe it'd be good to get some background into Leo Labs, founded in 2016. Six, 16, yes. Uh, so going on eight years uh, and sort of the space debris problem is not yet solved, uh, but there's a lot of efforts going into that, but you've obviously made a business out of sort of tracking that uh, that debris. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, maybe just that background into Leo Labs and where you see the company now, eight years on, you've got a new CEO as well. Yeah, uh, space debris and space traffic management, which is controlling all the satellites in space and, and around both the debris and around the other active satellites is becoming a, a harder and harder problem because there are more and more satellites. Yep. The number of satellites launched each year doubles. The annual rate doubles every two years. Uh, 2024, we had uh, over 3,000 satellites launched in one year alone. In fact, there was a launch about every two days. I it, saw one on Friday uh, out of Kennedy, so there you go. And it's incredibly common now, yep. right? Uh, SpaceX itself launches every three days. Uh, the Chinese launch every four days on average and this year it's going to be even more and next year even more so when we started our company there were less than a thousand active satellites well, we launched a thousand satellites in just in the last third of 2024 wow. so you know 2025 is going to be busier 2026 20, yet more so and so what we actually have is an issue of safely flying all these objects in space so you have to steer around the debris, you have to steer around each other, and you have to coordinate that. And that's why the company was founded. And there is discussions, is there not, around a international agreed sort of traffic management system or standard? Is there, where's that currently sitting? Is well, th there's a difference between, you know, standards, you know, th there are agreements of what is considered good behavior. Yeah. You know, re I, when you launch a rocket carrying some, for, some spacecraft, you should deorbit your booster. If you have a satellite that is going to die, you should bring it in on purpose and not leave it up there as junk. You should avoid hitting debris. You should not have objects come off your spacecraft. Those sorts of things are becoming more and more uh, prevalent. They've always been agreed as best practices, yep. but until somebody's had the ability to monitor them, you know, everyone said they, they uh, adhered to all these best practices. And we at Leo Labs track all these objects what we do is a commercial service. So what's different about us is that we are a, a commercial company as opposed to, say, the United States Department of Defense doing this. But we provide services to customers around the world, uh, countries around the world, operators of spacecraft, yep. uh, as well as governments. So, Do you have all your ground-based systems in place now? Are you anticipating any more great Oh, we're building many more. Yep. We currently have 11 radars operational, yep. and we have many more to come because the more radars you have, the better you can track these better things. Better coverage, right? Also, the, as more and more satellites are launched, remember the number of satellites doubles every two years. Yeah. So if you have a, a system which can track adequately all the spacecraft today, guess what? It's 50% underwater in just two years. So you cannot just tread water. So you must be building at a rate faster than doubling every two years. Um, maybe a little bit, a bit about your background as well uh, and the missions that you flew. Uh, but as I mentioned, it's great to have an astronaut on. on. Uh, yeah, maybe just a bit of background on terms of the flights that you did. Oh, I was lucky enough to get to fly the space shuttle a couple of times. I <laughs> uh, got to do uh, one of the early uh, construction missions uh, as a spacewalker on International Space Station. And then when we lost Columbia in 2003, uh, we decided to send up a crew, a, a skeleton crew of just two people yep. uh, to the space station and I had to get trained in a period of weeks to fly a Russian Soyuz, which I did, yeah. and uh, spent six months on board the space station with just one other person uh, as the first of the two-person skeleton crews that we had for several years after, after the loss of Columbia. So, and between that gap and, and leading up into LEO Labs, what were you doing? How did you sort of identify that there was going to be a requirement for space traffic management? Well, I, I stayed at NASA for a few years, and then I decided to do something totally different. So I left NASA, and we moved the family to California, and I started working for Google. Right. And I worked on uh, the beginnings of Google Maps, Google Earth, Google Street View, and a whole lot right. of what uh, of these uh, interesting 
projects, you know, so-called side projects, but were quite large. Like Google Maps is an enormous enterprise. Yeah. And it, you know, of all the things I've worked on, honest to God, it's probably the thing that touches the most people's lives on a day-to-day -day basis. Yes. Uh, did that for a number of years, and then uh, started an organization dedicated to protecting the Earth from asteroid impacts. It's called the B612 Foundation. We're yes. a nonprofit, and we calculate orbits of asteroids. We help find and track asteroids. We're one of the leaders in the field of planetary defense. Wow. And then I also founded, helped co-found uh, LEO Labs for the purposes of protecting things in orbit around the Earth. Well, you must be uh, keeping up with the news on the 2024 YR4. YR4. Yes, yeah, yeah, we were in the middle of that. We identified some observations that were unnoticed before we helped improve the orbit of this yes. asteroid, and we were uh, in the middle of the discussion with others on um, calculating the, the probability of, hitting, of it hitting yeah. the Earth, which dropped just about four or five days ago because of uh, more and more observations being able to refine the trajectory enough that we could tell that it was not just coming between the Earth and the Moon, but it's actually, we now know to be coming closer to the Moon than the Earth by a lot. Nice. We've been able to rule out that it's going to hit the Earth to a very high degree, there's only a tiny chance now that it hits the Earth, but it actually has a 1.6% chance as of today that it will hit the moon on December 22nd, wow. 2032. Well, and that would be observable depending on where it hits. Yes, so, yeah. it, the, uh, it won't actually be observable, observable in its own right, but if it's the well, moon, it might be. Imagine, you know, if it hit, yeah. Well, no, yeah. it will be observable as it comes past. Right. Okay. Uh, but uh, if it hits the moon, it will clearly be observable yeah. because we're talking about three to thirty megatons of TNT. Yeah. So I don't know what insights you've got into that, but I wasn't aware of this. So, what type of impact would that? Uh, we were talked about it being a potential city killer on Earth, mm -hmm. but on the moon, uh, how so much it, difference it would, would that be? It would create a crater. Yeah, as right. far as I know, there are no populated cities on the moon right now, <laughs> so good. I think we're safe there. Although Artemis better stay off there until <laughs> yeah, in the meantime. Exactly. <laughs> well, you know, it, it could actually be an interesting uh, test. Yeah. Because we could actually deflect it away. If it is going to hit the moon, we could actually deflect it away from the moon. And it might be a very interesting test of these technologies. We've already done it once yeah. with a mission called DART about two years yes, ago. Yes, yes. Um, just the, the technology was demonstrated sort of in principle. But you could actually deflect it away from hitting a body, but yep. say, you know, in a safe manner because it was only going to hit the moon. That's right. So it, it, it is something that we could consider doing. Okay. Well, look, Ed, now I could talk to you literally all day. There's, I've got a billion other questions in the back of my mind. Just, but just for time, we'll keep the audience wanting some more. Uh, we'll hopefully hear more from Leo Labs. Maybe as a sort of a takeaway, what's uh, 2025 looking for you like uh, with Leo Labs? Will we see you in Sydney at IAC? I hope to be there. Uh, Leo Labs is going great guns. We're building more radars. Um, business is going well. We are finding that the need to protect satellites in orbit is a good business to be in. Yep. And that there are more and more customers that need to protect those satellites. Beautiful. Well, Ed Lau, a former astronaut, uh, well, you suppose you're always an astronaut once you've been an astronaut, uh, and co-founder with Leo Labs. Thank you very much for joining us on Australian Space TV uh, here in Singapore at GSTCE. Thank you very much.